chapter 4, section 1 and 2. We've got a lot to get through, so we're going to move right along. But here are the goals for us to try to go through today. We'll see how far we get. So angle is the rotation of a ray. Uh, and so we've looked at angles and geometry. The question is our terminology. So we call this our initial, our starting point, our initial ray. Then we're going to rotate it in some direction, and that gives us a terminal. Terminal is the ending, the ending spot, terminal ray. And then this would be a negative angle because the direction we're going. So this is going to be clockwise. Clockwise is negative. Uh, the point here where the going from initial to terminal is called the vertex. So these are the definitions we should recall about an angle from geometry. If we're in standard position, standard position just puts it on a coordinate plane. So we put the vertex is on the origin. Our initial is always the positive x-axis. So this would be the initial ray. And so this is the starting point. And then we just move this ray off of that initial spot. And so if we go the other direction here, so this would be our terminal ray. So this would be the terminal. And then this is going to be a positive angle because it's counterclockwise. And so it's kind of the basic definitions of our angles when we talk about uh, uh, our terminology. So co-terminal angles are just angles that have the same initial and terminal side. So same starting and ending spot. And so there's different ways to find co-terminal angles. One way is we have this, we'll call this angle A, uh, and we can have an angle B that's co-terminal, is if we pass that terminal side, go all the way around and come back to it again. And so angle B and angle A are co-terminal. They have the same initial and ending spot, even though their degree measure are off by 360. The second way to look at if two angles are co-terminal, let me just draw an angle here. I'm going to call this angle A again. So A is one way of noting this from the initial to the terminal ray. The other way to show that using the same initial to terminal is going the other direction, B. So A so both of these angles, A and B, are starting at the same initial. They're both ending at the same terminal, but they have two different angle measures that have the same spot. So these are all co-terminal angles, A and B are. So radian. Radian is another way of measuring angles rather than using degrees. A radian measure is a, a central angle that creates an arc, S. So S is our, our term for an arc measure, equal to radius R. So let's visually show you what's happening here. So if we have some angle measure, so here's our angle. And so if we draw it into a circle because it's, we have the radius r, so we have r is here, r is here. Those radii give us an arc value. And the arc is this length right here, that's s. And for this to be a radian, for a radian, the r value here equals our s value. So that's how we define a radian measure. So there's a few things we got to pull out of here. So if we take circumference, so circumference is equal to 2 pi r, the unit circle, the unit circle. For the unit circle, we let the radius equals 1. And so if we have a radius of 1, then the circumference is going to be 2 pi times 1, or the circumference is going to be 2 pi. And so if we have a unit circle, if the radius is 1, then the arc length is 1. And so if we're looking at the, the circumference, then we have 2 pi radians. So this would be 2 pi radians and 1. And uh, every circle bigger than this, um, the radius... The radius gets bigger, the arc lengths get bigger, so the radian measures are always going to be 2 pi radians. 
So when you make the radius bigger, you're making the arc length bigger to find the radian measures. So all circles can be measured with radians, and they all have two pi radians for one for all around the circle. Uh, coterminal angles. So we look at like seven pi ninths. We can find coterminal angles to this by applying what we did up here on the top, is that we could go all the way down the circle again. So seven pi ninths, if we look at a one unit circle, so two pi is all the way around the circle, it's like 360 degrees, and that's equal to, in ninths, would be 18 pi ninths. So 18 pi ninths is the same thing as two pi, so using our equivalent fractions. So if we want to find a coterminal angle, if, if I add 18 pi ninths to this, I get 25 pi ninths. These are coterminal angles. So all I've done is the example here at the top where I've gone all the way around the circle, then plus that angle measure again. If I subtract the 18 pi ninths and get the negative 11 pi ninths, this is also coterminal. I'm going the opposite direction, the negative angle from the initial ray. So these are coterminal angles. So to find a coterminal angle, all we need to do is add or subtract the 2 pi as many times as you want. So I'm going to put the times in there. I'm going to need to multiply by as many ends as you want or subtract the 2 pi n as many times as you want to find coterminal angles. So converting. So if we look at a unit circle, how do we convert between degrees and radians? So on a, on a circle, if we know that there's 360 degrees in one circle, we should know 360 is equal to 2 pi. But we also can do half of that, do smaller, so 180 is equal to 1 pi. And you can go small, small on that, you go 90 is equal to 1 half pi, but we tend to use this one because then we have 1 pi and don't have, and have smaller values. And so we just need to convert our units. So this is 5 pi thirds as an example. Then we should, uh, we should automatically know this is in radians because we have our pi. So we want to convert that. We want to put pi's in the denominator, and we'll put 180 degrees in the numerator. And so the pi's here reduce out, because pi divided by pi is 1. And so we're just reducing that unit out. And then we can reduce our values here. 3 goes into 180 60 times, and 5 times 60 is 300. So 5 pi thirds is the same thing as 300 degrees. And we can go the other with that. If we have 320 degrees, we just want to multiply by the fraction. We put the degrees in the denominator, so the units reduce out, and we have pi in the numerator. Because pi over 180 are equivalent, so it's a multiply by 1. So then we just need to reduce this fraction. So you can start by just saying, like, the, to divide both those by 10, and you get 18 and 32. And then you divide both these by 2, and you get 9 or 16. And you divide, you can't divide those anymore, so you have 16 pi ninths would be that equivalent in radian form. So you should convert between degrees and radians. Okay, arc length. So S, like I mentioned before, is our arc length. It's always equal to R times theta, where theta is always our, our measure in radians. It's our radian measure. You have to use the radian measure to use this formula. It has to be in radian measure. So, example here, we have a radius of 27 uh, inches. So that's how long the radius would be. And we know our angle is 160 degrees. What would the arc length be for this degree? And so we first have to convert that degree, 160 degrees. We have to convert it into a radian measure. So if you get above, we're going to multiply by pi over 180. So our degree measure reduces out. And then we can reduce that. So we end up with, we divide both these by 2, actually by 20. So you get 8 pi over 9. So 8 pi ninths is the radian measure. So to find our arc length, it's always going to be our radius, 27, times our radians, 8 pi ninths. And then if we reduce this, and again we should reduce mentally, because 9 goes into 27 three times, and then 3 times 8 pi would be 24 pi is the arc length. Um, so this would be inches is how long the arc length would be. Okay, so before we do the unit circle, which we're going to talk about for a little while here, we can get into the, uh, some of the uh, 
ratios, trig ratios, we need to recall our special right triangles. This is, uh, to me, one of the most important things for trig is to understand these right triangles you should have learned from geometry. And there's two special right, tri right triangles we're, we're going to talk about. Um, and one of them here is the 45, 45, 90. The other one is the 30, 60, 90. And I'm hoping that you can recall your side ratios for this. And so for the 45, 45, 90, if I tell you that this side is x, you should know the other side has to be x. And then we have to recall, which is more difficult, is the hypotenuse is always going to be x times the square root of 2. And if you don't recall how to find that, you can actually go through Pythagorean theorem. So it's like x squared plus x squared equals our hypotenuse squared. And if you solve this, you're going to find the x times the root 2. So that's like mathematically how you could find that. So even if you forgot that, we can go back to the Pythagorean theorem to find that. Um, and so our 30, 60, 90, we have an x value here. Now, hopefully you recall that the hypotenuse is always double the short leg for a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then it's always our short leg times root 3 for the long leg on the long leg and the short leg for the 36 frame triangle. So these right here are your special right triangle rules from geometry that you should have some familiarity with. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take these and apply them to the unit circle. So when we have a unit circle, the unit means 1, and we're talking about the radius. So the radius here has a value of 1. And so we can apply these right triangles to the unit circle because you can make a right triangle to draw a vertical and horizontal line from that segment. So our hypotenuse is always going to be the unit portion of the unit circle. And when, so whenever I look at the unit circle, I'm always trying to visually picture these two triangles within the unit circle. And so I know my hypotenuse, and I need to try to solve for my x values. And so if I take this uh, hypotenuse formula, x times the square root of 2 equals 1, and I solve for x, x would equal 1 divided by root 2, which ends up being root 2 over 2, if I rationalize that. So that's what these two legs would be. So this would be root 2 over 2, and root 2 over 2. And then, uh, so we're going to use these segments in the unit circle. And we can do the same thing here for 36 to 90. If I solve my hypotenuse for x, I find that x is 1 half, so that's my short leg. And then my long leg, if I just multiply 1 half times root 3, I get root 3 times 2. So for the unit circle, we always know these are going to be the links. These will be the links of these two triangles uh, for the unit circles, 45, 45, 90 triangle, and 30, 60, 90 triangle. So when we make the unit circle, I'm trying to picture these triangles within it. So the unit circle. The unit circle is created from this equation, x squared plus y squared equals 1. And so you can see how uh, from geometry is really x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And so you can see that our radius is 1. And so this is the unit circle. And so we are going to look at some properties of this unit circle. First thing we got to realize is how to uh, look at our degrees or our measures.